think that works a little bit better. All right, so how are we doing? All right, we're gonna get this live stream started here in just a minute. Actually, that minute is over. We are at 14.15. How's everybody doing? How you doing, Ken? Thanks for tuning in. Just need to do my last little bit of a system check. Pull up my phone so I can see the chat from the live bench. There we go. So who else do we got going on? It's Tuesday, it's a wonderful day, and we're going to tie up some Clouser minnows. Well, full name is the Clouser Deep Minnow, to be precise. Now we're going to have a little pop-up quiz um, after our first tie, so let's go ahead and get things started. Um, I'm experimenting with some different music uh, for this live stream, so I'd appreciate uh, feedback on volumes, etc. If you can hear it, if it's too much, if it's not enough. But here we go. All right, chat publicly. I can say hiya. Hi, everybody. All right, so here is a Clouser Minnow. And I'm going to turn off my sound so I don't continue to hear myself in a 30 second delay after it's already been delayed a few seconds. So we're going to try to tie this up as close to um, how Bob Clouser himself ties it. So this is this is close to the recipe um, as we're going to get it today. I mean, unless you are the creator himself, then I don't know how you're going to exactly tie an exact replica. So, all right, so we're going to start off with our hook. And for this, I am using a Moonlit ML057 size 2. It's a 1X strong, 3X long. I like the extra long uh, shank on this hook. All right, size two, and I have a 140 denier uh, Danville's flat wax the floss. And one of the critical things that is always spoken about these clouds or minnows is where do you tie on your eyes? Where do you go? And it's the rule of thirds. So let's go ahead and break out our little meter here. And that shank of the hook, you know, just ballparking it, we're going to take that right at uh, 30 millimeters. What's great about the metric system is it's great for math. So uh, what is one third of 30 millimeters? That would be 10 millimeters. So we'll go ahead and shorten that down to 10 millimeters. And that's, that's where we want our eyes. That's where we want to put the eyes on this fly. So... That's where we're going to start. I'm going to keep my eye on that position. And one of the big mistakes people make is tying this uh, with the eyes too far forward. Um, so, yeah, we're going to start our thread and we're just going to build a little bit of a bump right here. No further, no back. Build up our thread a little bit. And truth be told, uh, earlier today I was watching some uh, other YouTube videos of how to tie this. And nobody ties it exactly how uh, the creator ties it, which is what I'm basing this off of. So we're going to take our dumbbell eyes. And right behind that we're going to take a couple of wraps this way and a couple of wraps this way. Get some cross wraps and we're going to push our eyes right up to our thread bump. And taking only cross wraps... This is the way we're going to do it, according to the original recipe. That's it. Nice, nice and tight. You know where those are going? Nowhere, that's where. All right, we'll wrap our thread forward to just behind the eye of the fly, or eye of the hook. And then we'll work our way back 
halfway between. So uh, let's go ahead and get our white bucktail. And I'm just going to take a small little batch. Sparse is nice when it comes to tying the Clouser Minnow. And I've tied these, uh, I kind of have my own way of tying these, uh, but for this purpose, we're gonna stick to as close as the original as possible. All right, we have a small little clump of hair, and we're gonna clean that out. Run it through our brush, run it through our comb, and um, we're not gonna stack, we're just gonna measure. Really make sure we get that clean. All right. There's one hook's length, and let's see, that's one, two hook's lengths there, about hook and a half sticking out of the tail, maybe about a hook's length coming off of the tail. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to pinch down on that nice and tight, and we're going to give this a nice clean trim. All right, this is the trick. We're going to wrap, and then we're going to pull up. Slide that back just a little bit. We're going to wrap forward to the eye of the hook. We're going to wrap back, securing that. We're still at that halfway point. All right, we're going to bump our thread under the eyes. We're going to take a couple of tight wraps directly behind the... Uh, the eyes of the dumbbell. All right, using an open spiral, pinching our material and pulling up. I'm gonna go right to that hook point, take a couple of tight wraps, and then we're gonna work our way back. Same open spiral. All right, too easy. There we are. There's, there's the first half. All right, we'll take our thread back under. Right there at that halfway point. All right, so now here we go. For those of you who have the fancy rotary vices, we're going to flip our hook over. And if you notice, taking a close look, I don't know if you can see it very well on the camera. Uh, let's get a cleaner bodkin to point. If we look underneath, there's no white hair underneath the, the shank. So keeping all that hair pulled up on top is what we're after. All right, we'll take our thread right to the eye of the, eye of the hook. We're gonna get some crystal flash. Let's go ahead and take a few strands out. Let's see, I'm at two, four, four strands ought to do it. Four or five strands thereabouts. Don't need to go two bananas with it. All right. We're gonna wrap this underneath and we're gonna bring our strands together. All right. And then that's gonna be just the right length. Oh, we gotta tighten up our vise. All right, pulling up. We're gonna wrap down on that. Right to that, halfway between the eye of the hook and halfway between uh, the eye, the dumbbell eyes. All right, here we are once again. Let's go ahead and find our bucktail. All right, Clouser minnows, a very popular co color combination is gonna be the white and chartreuse, obviously uh, you can tie it in any color combination as you want, as long as it's white and chartreuse. If it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. So let's go ahead and clip off a small little section of this bucktail. I'm gonna go about midway. It's hard to do reached out in front of me, but the piece of hair I'm gonna go for is right about there. It's a lot easier to just set, set your hide on your lap and go from there. And you know, one of the critical components, you know, I, I've said it once before and I'll say it again, sparse is nice, sparse is nice. So we're gonna keep our, our selection of hair kind of minimal. 
We'll make sure we'll give that a good clean. We're not going to stack it. We're not going to pack it. But we are going to measure it. And we want it roughly about the same length. I'm going to actually take a small pinch of that out. There we go. Sparse is nice. All right. Let's go ahead and get our slightly tapered cut. All right. Same thing. Take one wrap. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Get us a nice clean taper. All right, this time I like to spin my thread counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. That'll help us flatten our thread out. So now we're just going to wrap back and forth, building a small head. This doesn't get bumped behind the dumbbell eyes or anything like that. We just build our nice tapered cone head up front. Might be a little bit sparse, but yeah, it is what it is. All right, we'll go ahead and finish this off with a nice clean whip finish. One, two, three turns. There we have it. We'll go ahead and trim off our thread. All right, head cement, dealer's choice. You can go ahead and use what you want. I am going to, what am I going to use today? I'm going to just come in with some uh, Solar Res Bone Dry. There we go. Clean that off. And I had some issues with it earlier, so I did zap it in the microwave. So this is kind of close to as I can get it as to how the creator of this fly ties it. Uh, more or less and after our pop quiz stay tuned because I'm going to show you an alternate way to tie it kind of more or less how I tie it really um, which is different it's absolutely a little bit different and that's okay um, you know I think if there was only one way to tie a fly then a lot of us would be out of business so that is Kind of as close as I can get it to as an original tie of Bob Clouser. Probably shorter. I'm probably way too short on my uh, bucktail as far as length. But there you have it. Let's go ahead and hop on over to our pop quiz. Speaking of the Clouser minnow, let's go ahead and check this out. Pop quiz. The Clouser Deep Minnow. Uh, pictured above, you see right, right up, right up there. You'll see a picture of a Clouser Minnow that I tied previously. Um, that's a little bit more to how I like to tie it. Anyways, let's cover the Bob Clouser Minnow. The who, where, what, when, and I don't know why. So the Clouser Minnow. Who invented it? Uh, where was it originally intended to fish? What body of water? What uh, species of fish was it originally targeting? Uh, what year? When, when was it uh, originally tied? And why? Why would anybody create such a fly? So let's uh, go ahead and toss out your answers. Um, as much as you know, I know obviously uh, Steve Trybowski has a little little added insight on this uh, so and I leaked out a little bit a couple of couple of cheats couple of hints prior to uh, the pop quiz so you should should be doing all right go ahead and leave your comments comment on here uh, on the live stream and if you're watching this after the live stream go ahead and comment below uh, what your favorite color combination of uh, the Clouser minnow is for you We'll give everybody a few more minutes, maybe not minutes, but another few moments. We've been working on, well, it's not Bob Krause, C-L-O-U-S-E-R, Bob Clauser. There you go. 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and just reveal these answers. Let's get that pulled up. Where's our answers? All right, answers are up. The who, where, what, when, and why. Who invented the Clouser Deep Minnow? The one, the only, Bob Clouser. And there's actually some pretty cool variations on this Clouser Minnow. Uh, one of my favorite is the 50-50. Uh, it's a joint between Lefty Cray, Re Lefty Cray and Bob Clouser. So it's part deceiver, Lefty's deceiver and uh, part Clouser minnow. Uh, that's a fun one to tie and a fun one to fish. Uh, where was it originally intended to fish? That was the Susquehanna River. That's on the eastern portion of the United States. What species of fish are we looking at? We are looking at the good old smallmouth bass. Hmm. Do you think that might be why I like to fish it here? Um, Central Minnesota, smallmouth bass. Oh, they love it. They love it. The chartreuse and white clouser is one of my first flies I'm always throwing out there. When was it originally tied? 1987. 1987. So, yeah. It's been around for a little while, but it's not, not your grandfather's pattern, if you will. Um... And why was it tied? Well, plain and simple, uh, imitating bait fish, it works. Imitating bait fish works. So uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and move on. We're going to hop back over to the bench. And we're going to tie, we're going to tie another, uh, I don't know, kind of my variation on it and how I handle the bucktail and such, which is slightly different. Um, but the same concepts will apply. So let's hop back over to the bench. There we go. All right. So this was our first one. We'll go ahead and just set this one off to the side. And we'll get our blank hook in the vise. Same hook. This is the Moonlit ML057, size 2, 1X strong, 3X long. How about it? There we go. There's the package on that. So common sizes for this fly any, range anywhere from size 10 to one knot. It's a great pattern for uh, deep sea fishing. Or not deep sea fishing, uh, you know, saltwater fishing, great surf and turf. All right, same thing, 140 denier flat wax thread. How about it? Let's go ahead and start this off right there at that one third point. Once that's started, we'll go ahead and trim off that tag end. And I'm going to build a small little bump just like before. And here we go. This is, oh, our, our dumbbell eyes. I didn't mention our dumbbell eyes. Uh, these are ba -ba -da -ba, size medium. These are medium reds. And let's see, let's see. Medium is 1 30th of an ounce. So pretty heavy. And that's okay because we want this guy to sink. Sink, sink, sunk. Do a couple cross wraps. And if you noticed before on the previous tie, I didn't do any figure eight wraps. I don't know why um, Clouser doesn't do that, but I think it just kind of binds everything just a little bit tighter. And there we have it. All right, so I like to just park my thread right in front of the dumbbell eyes. This is, this is more or less my variation of uh, how I like to tie a Clouser minnow. Um, like I said, no two will, uh, two fly tires will absolutely be identical. All right, so we're going for a little portion right here. This has been chopped up a little bit, so we're tiptoeing close to the brown portion, but we still have plenty, plenty here to choose from. Go ahead and trim the small little section right from the hide. 
Clean that out. Pinch tight and pull. Sometimes you can even get a little bit more with your uh, eyebrow brush. And then to straighten everything out, we just run our comb through it. All right, so here we go. There's our one hook's length. Line that up right back there. All right, so this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a couple of soft wraps on the front, ignoring what happens, and then I'll come back here and immediately take a couple of tight wraps. All right, now at this point, I'm going to do my open spiral to the rear, just like before, right to that hook point. There we go. Pulling up and back. A couple of nice tight wraps at that hook point, and then we'll return with our open spiral. All right, now I'm going to bump back over, lift my little clump. I'm going to pull that up, and I'm going to take a couple of tight wraps behind or underneath. Another tight wrap right on top, and I'll park my thread right in front. All right, so that's a little bit different. Uh, the, obviously, this is creating extra steps opposed to just trimming it and tying it in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this at an angle. It doesn't matter what angle it is, as long as it's a diagonal cut and your longest bits of hair do not exceed your uh, eye of the hook. So we'll carefully wrap this down. We got a couple of strays, but that's okay. So there is that front end. We'll flip our fly over in the vise. And we'll get our crystal flash. Same as before, we'll just take a few strands. I like to cut the corner of my flash bags and then using my uh, whip finish tool, get in there and just grab a small clump. Look at that. One, two, three, four strands. Not really counting, but that's just where it ends up. All right, same as before. Except I'm not going to do mine all the way up front. I'll just set it on top, take a turn or two, and just fold that all back. Keeping it, keeping it centered. All right, next, chartreuse. We'll just go ahead and add our next bit of bucktail. Another little bit of chartreuse. If it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. What do you think? All right, so let's take a little chunk of hair. We're basically going to wash, rinse, and repeat except we're not going to take anything back past the dumbbell eyes. Let's go ahead and give this a quick brush. And we'll set this on the back side. So measure this out. This one's going to come out just a little bit longer, which I'm, I'm kind of digging. All right, we're going to set that right on top. Do our soft wrap to capture it. A couple of nice tight locking wraps. I'm going to lift this up, take a wrap right in front of Park my thread down and in front of that. Same as before. I'm going to do my angle cut. Oh, I missed a couple. It's all right. There's always take two. All right. Go ahead and lash this all down, nice and easy, nice and even. All right, same as last time, counterclockwise spins, anti-clockwise, if you will. We're going to build a nice cone-shaped thread head up front. Ooh la la, that's locking down nice and pretty. And this, I, I typically end up right behind, or right up to the dumbbell eye. We'll 
end this off with a whip finish. One, two, three. And the video I was watching earlier, uh, Bob actually ties, or whip, or not whip finishes, but uh, finishes his fly off with a 30 minute epoxy. Um, and we're always looking for more of a, a narrow, narrower profile than, than wider. One little hair sticking its way up. One little guy. Got it. All right. Head cement. We're going to come in with some solar as bone dry. And we'll just give that a nice big coat. Be generous with it. Get up into those dumbbell eyes and a little bit into it. That's all right. I want to give that a zap. So that's uh, Clouser 2.0. That's, that's more or less how I like to tie it. Um, but I think that being said, you know, who's right, who's wrong? Well, obviously Bob Clauser's right, because it's his fly. But, uh, you know, ultimately, any way you can get it in the water, that's, that's what really matters. So, let's see here where we're at. We are coming to an end so yeah the old clouser minnow by bob clouser originally tied in 1987 at the susquehanna river fishing for smallmouth bass uh, i think at this time we're going to go ahead and just wrap this live stream up we did uh bob clouser's version as close as I could replicate it, more or less, uh, and kind of how I like to tie it. Another variation or version of how to tie, like everybody else has their own two cents on how to tie it. Um, but like I said, that first one was a little bit closer to how Bob would tie it. Although I'm sure if Bob watched me tie it, he might have a couple of things to say. So um, yeah. I have no idea what we're going to do next for our next uh, live stream, but who knows? Stay tuned. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That's really important. And that way you'll be able to get noticed when I start doing these live streams. So with that, I think we're going to leave it at that. Um, leave your comments below what your favorite color combination of the Clouser Minnow is. All right. What's your favorite color combination? Um... Coming up soon, we have a. Uh, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I'm thinking about doing a giveaway at the 1,000 subscriber mark. I'm going to have to talk to some people, get some swag donated. So, all right, we're going to switch to our credits. And there you have it. Um, yeah, good stuff. We're going to leave it at that. Happy tying, everybody. And until next time, tight lines. Peace.